Oh, this is all camp. And this is not a spring chicken today. We brought somebody out as a special guest, which you've seen if you've been watching Old Camp, and this happens to be BS, the bull. Yeah, and BS has never been watched. Okay, we do a lot of things that people don't really understand. Well, I mean, they don't understand to begin with. I twisted sense of humor. They, but they, they, uh, they think they're meaning something else. You know, does this mean cow manure? No, BS, the bull actually had something meant to do with the stock market. Just like bear the bear the, bear the market, the market. Yes, the bull. Yeah, and we, you know, actually, I forgot. I don't know. I gotta remember. Where's I gotta, bear the market I have, I, I have, I spent a little more bear the market than I haven't seen him in a while. Monty's family gets around, but it has to do with the, you know, like a here. This is a bull market, mm -hmm. and the fact that when you have a bull market is nothing but BS because the world is under a stage of collapse. Well, part of it is whenever you have a bull market, it's not necessarily BS. But right now, I have to say it's pretty much oh, yeah. BS. The Obama administration has now downsized the last three months, saying, well, unemployment wasn't as good as what we originally thought it was. Home sales were not as good as we originally thought they were. Uh, housing starts were not as good as we thought they were. Uh, um, you know, there were more people unemployed than what we thought. But the unemployment didn't go up no matter what. Unemployment never goes up under Obama, no matter how many people aren't working. The, uh, People weren't spending as much money as we thought they were. Uh, people were not factory in, factory orders weren't what we thought they were. You know, there's all this thing. But um, BS will tell you that don't worry with George Bush and the public is fault. Well, you know, one of the things when we look at all of these um, statistics that come out, we do take a look and see. Well, first of all, where the statistics are happening. Right, but we also do take a look around here at general things like when you go into the stores, how full of, is the stocking for the shelves? Yeah, are people actually carrying things out in bags? Yeah, okay. I mean, we, we go into like a, you know, the department stores, the grocery stores, the uh, the consumer like I mean, like the other day we're coming to electronic stores, getting her a new cell phone, and the parking lot was full. People weren't buying anything. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. They were not buying anything. And there's a difference between, okay, if you come out with one bag, you know, you, you know, you go in and you come out with a little bag, that's not buying stuff. That's basically doing what you need to keep things going. So, um, and you knew because we were there for several hours. Yeah, I, I was there for three hours when she was willing and yelling on cell phones, folks. Mm -hmm. She got a new nice one. She'll be doing a review on her cell phone for, you know, in a while. Actually, it was supposed to be my cell phone, but she maneuvered herself out of my phone. <laughs> So, it's not exactly like it was supposed to be. I know. So she got herself a nice phone, and I, I have my old one. So, but um, uh, but no, they weren't buying or selling anything. And what they are selling tends to be lower price. I mean, I saw convection. I saw um, microwave convection ovens for two hundred ninety nine dollars. Mm -hmm. That's god awful low for a convection microwave. So, but um, the TV sets are down. They're doing something which I thought is unusual. They're selling 60-inch TV sets all over the place. I know 60-inch television sets are bad in California. That was the surprising part because we live in California. Yeah. A part of it makes me want to go back and look at those regulations. I it looked was, at the regulations. With size and um, power. Yeah, but I think it has to do with the fact if they had those things in inventory, they could continue, they could continue, continue to sell them. They can't, they can't get new inventory, but they probably... You know, because they figured that the 60 inch was what people, they, all the people determined the 60 inches is what people really want to watch. So the, the warehouse is probably full of 60 inch sets waiting on that law to become law so that they could bring them all out. So, but the bigger sets are coming in from out of the, out of the state, though they have come in. But then um, they said there is a, okay, there is a business, but the business isn't selling things that you're not supposed to have. What do you mean? Well, that's what it is. I mean, if you're not supposed to have tobacco, they're running tobacco. If you're not supposed to have alcohol, they're running alcohol. If you're not supposed to have, you know, 80-inch TV sets, they're bringing in 80-inch TV sets. If you're not supposed to have guns, they're bringing in guns. You're not supposed to have ammunition, they're bringing in. It's the, I mean, all the things you don't want, you're not supposed to have? All the things you're not supposed to have are the things that there's a market in. Because ah. a lot of them has to do with the fact that, I mean, Yesterday, I mean, I was listening to the speeches, you know, uh, this is, okay, okay, if I were to say, we're going to take not a spring check out, that basically, you know that that means she's going to get wiped out, folks, but no, a politician said, well, you know that I was just jesting. No, they weren't jesting. 
They said, we're going to teach the SOBs a lesson and take them all out. We're going to take um, this country back for the working man. Oh, that's the Labor Day speech? Yeah, Labor Day speech. Basically, you're talking, you're talking to the news media, and the news media is laughing it off. Well, you know how they are, but it doesn't make any difference. So what if he said, we're going to kill you people? Well, you people say far worse about the Democrats than the president. No, they don't. Well, see, part of it is that is a threat. That's a threat. And Obama threatened people yesterday, too. He flat out threatened. You're either going to join me in putting our country first, or you're going to regret it. That's a threat. That is a total and absolute threat on the people. He threatened the Tea Party. He threatened Republicans. And he threatened everyone that is not a union member. He threatened them yesterday, and he should be in a... You know, he should be in a jail cell, pure and simple. He should have been, somebody, if they had the guts, would have simply called the local authorities and had him arrested yesterday for his statements. They won't do that. They're, because they're gutless, they're cowards. I mean, okay, we'll put it this way. If Barack Obama had went to Chicago, Illinois, made that speech, and he would, one of his opponents was a Republican from, from, from Cicero, they would have had him arrested. They wouldn't have given a damn whether he was president of the United States. They'd have had him arrested. Mm -hmm. This would have been a man walking off the stage with his cuffs behind his, on, and behind his back cuffed for making threats on people's lives. You can't do that. I mean, he, the, when, okay, the, the reason why the Democrats did not go after Bush heavily like everybody thought they were going to is because they were afraid of what happens if you set the presidents which means yeah. you go after the next president, the next president, the next president, because they already know that the people are going to go after Obama when he's no longer president of the United States. They're going to charge him with high crimes and misdemeanors. Well, he did rather push it more than any other president I'm familiar with. Well, they said that he has no, he, he's a law professor that has total and absolute contempt. Remember, that's white man's law. Well, I hate to tell the president this, but him like me, him not black, I'm not white. So therefore, it is our law. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she's the only purebred person around, I and mean, she's got freckles. So I know. <laughs> I mean, she has which my, means I'm not as pure as which, they said. As my I father was. would have said. My father said, "Well, there was obviously an, another rooster in that hen house at some time." Actually, you know, most of the people are mixed now. Yeah, I think they are, but uh, but um, but. You know, but um, the economy sucks, folks. No matter what you want to put, like I said, uh, I'm listening to Democrats. The Democrats are now, they're now admitting there will be nine percent unemployment in the, during the next election, and up to until two thirteen. Then the election, then we're going to start seeing a heavy employment coming back because they'll know that our country will be stable because the Democrats will have taken control again. They're scared to death of Democrats. We have divided government because they people want. It stopped. They want the spending stopped. Mm -hmm. The Tea Party is composed mostly of, of independents, not Republicans. Independents, because Republicans can't stop spending money any more than Democrats can. Mm -hmm. So, and since nobody will listen to the wing of the party that wants you to stop, you can't stop spending money during this time. Well, if you do nothing but stop money, stop spending money, you get your trillion and a half dollars that you need. Well, here's the part that is a concern: is that since the numbers have been screwed with so much, what are the real numbers? Uh, I heard uh, Mark Zuckerman yesterday, who knows a bit about money and hiring people. Um, you know, one of the biggest, when he's, he's a money cruncher, he said the real numbers are 18 plus percent unemployment, mm -hmm. and and it gets worse than that. He said like 18 uh, percent un real unemployment, maybe 20 to 30 percent underemployed, which means half the people in this nation are not really making. And then, and I heard the guy said, "Yeah, but don't 51 percent of people pay, live off of government subsidies to begin with?" And he said, "That's where a lot of them come from. What? That, that's where a lot of the government subsidies are going for those, uh, uh, you know, 30 percent that are that are way underemployed. It means they have to go out every now and then and do something in order to be able to pick up their checks. Ah. Yeah, that's that's what that's what Bill Clinton did to them. He said you have to do something somewhere at some time." In order to earn your, um, you know, your welfare check. So, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I, I don't understand. I mean, I, I, I know that our big problem is is that with Fox News in the tank for Obama, there's no place to turn for real news anymore. 
because... I, I know, and a lot of you go, what are you talking about Fox News and the tank so okay. long? If you've been following, you know that Rupert Murdoch was under investigation. And he's under investigation. Him and his son are under investigation by the Justice Department for something they didn't do and never did do, and it never happened. I know, and that was in a different country. In a different country. It had nothing to do with here. They did not... Okay, first of all, we're going to try to explain it as B.S. could say it. Remember how, how Wiener said, I was hacked? Mm -hmm. Hacked is another word for buying information now from people. Oh, that's what that word means now? They're now, it is now, uh, you know, well, we... The we, new vocabulary. Know, and because they don't want to, well, instead of, instead of charging them with uh, giving information, well, I was obviously hacked. You know, they sold information. You know, all the way up to number 10 Downing Street, people were selling information to. But it, it's just, um, it's the way it's done. It's been done since, anybody remember the great, greatest movie of all time, Citizen Kane? You know, William Randolph Hearst, William Randolph Hearst started this. That the Examiner, the Examiner was a scandal publication. You know, and R Rupert Murdoch, almost all those scandal magazines you see out there in the no stands, the Globe, the Examiner, all things, they're all, they're all owned by Murdoch. Uh, TMZ, it's a scandal publication. I mean, basically, when I was young, people don't know who, uh, oh, anybody that's around her age knows who uh, Walter Winchell only as the voice of the Untouchables, mm -hmm. the narrator of the Untouchables. But there was a time that him and Luella Parsons and Hedda Hopper could destroy people by simply putting, you know, uh, saying something on their radio show or in their column that wasn't the truth. People lived in terror of them. Today they live in terror of, um, you know, of, of Perez Hilton. They live in terror of, uh, of the Huffington Post. They live in terror of TMZ. You know, and <laughs> what they all think I'm coming all Jews. <laughs> oh, are you serious? Harvey Levin, Perez Hilton, Huffington, they're all Jews. Are they, are yeah. they really in terror of the Huffington Post? They're all Jews. Post? They're all Jews. They, they, oh, they, they're they, in terror of the Huffington Post. They're all Jews. Well, can't trust them. <laughs>